Hi guys, and welcome back to another Dot Race video, and today we're going to be playing Rims Racing. Now I want to say a big, big thank you to the guys over in Race World Studio and Nacon for allowing me a chance to play this game early. It has been really, really cool. I've been super excited to try this game ever since it was announced, and I've got to say I have really, really enjoyed my time testing out different things, trying out the different tracks, and feeling the bikes and learning the difference uh, in the senses of uh, bike configuration and looking at the data and uh, dealing with the analytics of the bike and understanding it. It's been more of a learning tool and uh, I have really, really enjoyed it. But I will mention this is an early access build, so whatever you see now could be subject to change. Of course, there are probably a little bit of few kinks that we'll be working on, but I'm going to give you my review and give you some feedback of what I've experienced so far in RIMS Racing. So let's take a look at the visuals then, shall we? The game looks great. I really love the detail to the tracks, I love the detail to the surrounding areas, and of course the bikes look fantastic in themselves. We'll be taking a deeper look later on in the video, but for the time being, I just want to show you the Circuit Zolder right here in Belgium, utilising the Kawasaki ZX-10RR, and of course I had to use a Kawasaki because I know a lot of my subscribers are Team Green. Now if you're eagle eyed you would have noticed the scratching and the sparks of the motorcycle touching the ground then and some of the knee sliders sparking. I think that is a magnificent feature and it's something that makes me smile every single time I see it. And once again even recording this video I've smiled once again. But let's take a look at the biggest thing that separates rims racing to other motorcycle races. And that is the customization of the motorcycles. Now this is much more than just a bike game. For me this has been a learning tool learning every single part of the bike and learning around how to reattach and attach things. So for example, we're going to take off the mirrors. We don't need the mirrors right now, so we're going to take them off. Follow the on-screen prompts and there you go, the mirrors have been removed. Let's place the mirrors back on then, shall we? Nice and easy, insert the mirrors, tighten all the nuts and there you go, you have your mirrors. Now you will see as well that each individual component does have a lifespan. So for example, if you are utilizing them too much, maybe you damage them during a race, you will have to come back here and swap them out for brand new. And I gotta say, that is a magnificent feature. It is so cool learning about the bike and understanding how to change the mounting and unmounting procedures. And for me, I have never dissembled a motorcycle. I have played simulator games where they simulate building motorcycles and removing parts. And this is a brilliant, brilliant addition. I'm really enjoying it and just tweaking each individual part. Perhaps during a race earlier on, I might have crashed and scratched something up. So I'll come back here, replace the parts, and then you got a fresh new looking Kawasaki. I've really enjoyed this part, I, I really like the feature, and I tell you what, I think a lot of you bike fans will enjoy it as well, especially you guys who actually are on the road, you guys who actually compete in track days, it's going to feel something quite natural and quite at home for you guys. Perhaps you'll probably pick out a few points where you say, I wouldn't do it like that, or I would do it like this. Either or, I guess the video game adaptation to the real life thing is really, really cool. And for me, big thumbs up for me, I really like this feature. It could be a little bit of a novelty after a while, perhaps you've only made a little bit of a mistake and then you've had to change so many parts. I understand that, but for the time being, looking at this right now, I don't think I'll get bored of this at any time soon. The Kawasaki now looks great, we're going to put all the pieces back onto it. Perhaps the next time I'll maybe repair a few things and maybe buy some more components, but for the time being, I'm happy with that. So welcome to the place you're probably going to spend a lot of time at, and that is your hub right here in the career mode. You have your research and development table, you have the motorbike stand, and even on the top floor you've got things like changing your leathers, changing your helmets, and rider customization in general. But right now for the actual calendar part of career mode, this is where you're going to be tackling all of your races and getting better and better. The academy made in this game is very, very good for newcomers, so if you are brand new to the game, you'll probably want to start off in the academy, learn the bikes, learn about the braking, learn about the acceleration, and you'll have a much, much better time handling the motorcycle because we will get back to the action in a minute's time because I do want to show you more and talk about the action itself. So now I want to take a look at the gameplay itself. We had a brief look at the beginning but let's tackle a race. Now first thing I will mention is the AI is not ready yet. It is still an early access build as mentioned earlier on. It's still very very new and the kinks need to be worked out with the AI. They're a little bit difficult to race right now because they make a lot of mistakes, they go wide and they tend to bump you around a lot but that's quite okay for an early access build. It's roughly what you would usually expect. But talking about the motorcycle itself, if you take away the AI, you'll probably not notice that this was an early access game. 
The bikes handle extremely well. I have really, really enjoyed the weight and the feeling of the motorcycles themselves. Massive props to Race World Studio for nailing the sound of the motorcycles and the sense of speed. I don't think a game has done the sense of speed quite like Rims Racing does. I really, really enjoy playing this game with headphones on full blast, watching the rider tuck in behind the bubble and absolutely going backwards on the throttle. It was so, so cool. It sounds great. And I really like the way the riders move. I think the riders move quite naturally. They look quite good on the motorcycle. The sense of gearing is a little bit exaggerated. It's not off-putting, but I do find he really chucks down the gears and really lifts up the gears when sometimes it could be a little bit more of a gentle movement. But I do really enjoy the way he puts the left leg out or the right leg out respectively and slows himself into the corner. One thing I have neglected to mention, this game is built on the KT engine and that is different to Milestone's MotoGP series and the Ride series. However, it still feels somewhat familiar. I was able to pick up this game and just play it straight off the bat. And this is very important for me from the sense of enjoyment. I don't have much time to learn a new game, learn new bikes and stuff like that. So this felt very, very familiar and yet friendly as well. Like everything was easy enough to understand. The way the voiceovers were done, it was very easy to listen to. I really enjoyed the way this game was presented to me. I like the idea of the acceleration and the braking gauges. That's very important for me as a content creator to help you guys with braking guides and acceleration guides. So a massive thumbs up for me. Additional in the bottom right corner of your screen there, the lean angle. I really love that because that is a great commentary thing for me to use from now on. So we'll be going into 40 degrees corners, 60 degrees, etc, etc. We're going to go into a lot more details yet guys, we still have plenty more to look at. I don't even think I'll be able to touch the entire surface of everything that is packed into this game. However, not everything is 100% perfect, there are a few things that I would like to change. Personally for me, the lack of bikes is a little bit disappointing. There are only 8 bikes in the game, but of course these bikes are the best of the best. You've got your Prilius, your Kawasaki, your Ducati, MV Augusta, Yamaha, Suzuki, Honda and BMW. The best bikes are out there on the market. It makes sense to utilise those and I'm a big believer over quality over quantity so it's hard to really give him a hard time over that but I would have rather seen just a couple more motorcycles but at the same time if more motorcycles meant less features, more motorcycles meant less in-depth looks at the tyres and the bikes then I gotta say yes maybe compromises do have to be made somewhere or another. The same thing has applied for the tracks as well. I do believe that we could have had a lot more tracks but again quality over quantity i got to say, maybe you got to stick with that in mind. And I guess with this game being more of a focus on learning the motorcycle, improving the bikes in different ways, utilising those particular tracks would make more sense than in having 30 tracks and less sort of details, less sort of data and less sort of components to work with. Because you won't believe the actual amount of tyres and components in this game. There is a massive, massive list of components, especially the tyres as well. There is so many different styles of tyres and even trying out slicks and certain sort of damp situations that sort of middle in the between. Like you might get away from slicks, but maybe the intermediate would be better. You can take that gamble. Not many games allow you to do that, but Rims Racing definitely gives you the freedom to do just that. The amount of tyres and components though is going to be way too much for this video right now. We'll be here all day going through each individual component. However, that does kind of affect what I was saying earlier regarding the tracks. You have a plethora of components and tyres to pick from and maybe not so many tracks. Now if you had way more tracks and not so many components and tyres to change, it would kind of take it away from the actual experience of the game. It is about trying to find those extra bit of tents by utilising different components, maybe changing the tyres, maybe using a different combination. That's what this one's more about instead of just actually racing and ch churning out the lap times. It does make more sense for where Rims Racing is concerned. Allow me to show you a new nifty feature part of this game that is really exciting. This is MSC, the motorbike status check. Now during a Grand Prix at any point, you can check out the condition of your bike. And this is very, very important to understand what components get used during a Grand Prix weekend. So when you are racing at the highest level and you are pushing the motorcycle everywhere as much as you can, which parts are going to deteriorate the fastest? As a fan of the motorsports in general, I've just assumed it'd be the tyres, the braking, suspension perhaps. But this one goes really in depth and you can see every single little bit that is under stress during a race, practice or even qualifying session. 
So I have just done a couple of laps around the Nürburgring and unfortunately I did actually make my demise and I crashed the motorcycle in one of the low side corners and then I actually crashed again. So we will take a look at the damage in a moment and also see how well the components stand up after such a heavy load of braking, after so much acceleration and a couple of crashes. So as far as the tyres go, of course this is a rain tyre so it won't disintegrate or depreciate as quick as other tyres would do, especially for slicks. Now looking at the front springs, you'll see it's down to 88% health not bad it's still going to be very responsive it'll still help you out 93 percent on the actual brake pads not too bad not worried about those but the front brake disc has taken quite a lot of pounding there and is now down to 81 percent so each individual component will degrade over time and of course the more you use it and the heavier you race the more they will depreciate. So everything you can see there will be replaced during the motorbike stand on the hub world. Of course, during a Grand Prix weekend, you can't change these things, so make sure you're prepared before you start any racing. So let's take a look at the visuals once again. I want to have a look at the damage. And as you can see, there is some heavy scratches on the side of the MV Augusta. Looking a bit rough, a little bit worse for wear. It's the same can be said for the Alpine Stars leathers and even the Kite helmet. Now, of course, the damage has been done and will affect the motorcycle, but will also be need to be replaced during the motorbike stand in the hub world. Now I haven't included everything in this game, I do want to keep some things private for you guys to experience yourselves, I don't like to spoil everything in one review, but don't worry you guys won't have to wait too long to find out how you feel about this game, because you can download the demo on Steam tomorrow and you can experience this game for the first time, just like I have done here. Now let me know in the comment section down below if you enjoyed the video, let me know tomorrow how you get on with the demo, I can't wait to hear everyone's opinions, and let me know in general what else you would like to see from rims racing when it launches 19th of august 2021 but upon that note guys thank you very much for checking out this video big thank you once again to race world studio nacon and upon that note guys that is it for me like comment and subscribe if you enjoyed the video hit the notification bell to be alerted to every single dot race upload and upon that note guys thanks for watching and ciao for now oh hi didn't quite see you there Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Race content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Race video.